Who doesn't like a bit of customization talk? Because I certainly do. See, tennis is such a unique sport because customization is so easy to do and there are some fantastic frames and tools out there that make it very easy to get right. Now, if you've read the title or thumbnail, you're probably thinking to yourself, Luca, you can customize any racket. What are you talking about? And you're definitely right, you can. But that doesn't mean that some rackets aren't better for customization and that some just naturally play better in stock form. The Babolat Pure Drive, for example, has kind of a perfect static weight, swing weight, and balance in stock form. And if you do want a heavier version of it, you can kind of just get the Pure Drive Tour. I think there are some rackets that are just asking to be customized away from their stock form. And those are the ones we're gonna be covering today. Now remember, like with a few other videos that we have released, this is obviously a personal opinion type thing. My opinion is obviously fact, but if you do disagree with anything I say, just let me know in the comment section down below. And remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and go check out any of the rackets that I mentioned here on our website, racketsandrunners.ca. And I just, just wanna say a thank you from the bottom of my heart for the support that we've been getting for the last few months. It really has been an amazing journey, so let's keep it going. Also, keep watching the video because later on, I'm going to be talking about this brand new gadget that we just got that's definitely going to help us be way better with customization in the future. Now, one of the things I wanted to address right away is that most of the rackets on this list have a constant beam. The thing I like about a constant beam for customization is that it has a consistent flex no matter where the weight is distributed on the frame. The rackets on this list are also generally pretty soft and flexible. That's because soft rackets do really well with extra weight because it helps to stabilize them. Now in today's tennis industry a lot of soft rackets are already pretty stable even with a low static and swing weight because of stabilization layup technologies but still I think it's always nice to add weight to soft rackets so that you can achieve more classic stabilization. Finally, you're going to notice that none of the rackets on this list weigh more than 305 grams stock. They're all fairly light. That just means that you can add more weight without making them too difficult to use. But enough chit chat, let's talk about some rackets. In our video detailing the Wilson lineup, I mentioned that one of the best things about the blade is that it's kind of the perfect racket to customize to a certain spec. It takes all of the boxes that I mentioned earlier, thin beam, soft flex, and especially the fact that it comes in at a low 305 gram weight. For a thin, soft 98 square inch frame, 305 grams is quite low. Generally, this spec does better at a slightly higher static weight because it just makes the racket a lot more solid. Now, this version of the blade is actually remarkably stable in stock form, but that doesn't mean it doesn't get really good with a bit more weight. Boosting the static weight to around 315 is almost a must to me with every blade. So I always give it the good old leather grip treatment. Leather grips add about eight to 10 grams, and because you're putting that weight in the handle, it boosts stability more than anything else. Honestly, you should all give this a go. A leather grip gives the blade a sort of pro balance and feel that I absolutely love when I'm playing with the racket. Now, especially on the 1619, because the swing weight is so low, you've got plenty of room to put weight in the hoop. Some of you will put it at three and nine because that'll help expand the sweet spot a little bit, but I'm not sure it needs it there that much. Instead, I would put it at 12 o'clock to give the frame a bit more plow through and spin like I've done here. Boost that swing weight to the mid 320s and it'll just perform better against bigger hitters. The 1820 already has a much higher stock swing weight than the 1619, which I think is a good thing because you do need that extra heft to handle the tighter string bed, but I do think that it needs that static weight boost even more than the 1619. Again, a leather grip is my go-to option, but you can also add the equivalent amount of weight in lead under the stock grip. You definitely can add a bit more swing weight. For those of you that can handle a 330 plus swing weight, the racket's going to play extremely well at that spec as you would expect from any 1820 blade. The gravity is similar to the blade in a lot of ways. It has a thin beam, a soft flex, and a very low static weight. Instead of like on the blade, which is 305, it's 295 on the gravity MP, which is just a little low for me. The blade can be played by anyone in stock form, no argument there, but I don't think that the gravity MP at 295 grams can be truly competitive at the highest level with that low of a stock static weight. You gotta boost that static weight, and again, a leather grip is the perfect way to do so. By the way, I've become a bit of a meme at the store for my obsession with leather grips, but they really do boost playability and feel, so what can I say? Anyways, I think the Gravity MP needs to weigh at least 305 grams, so throw on that leather grip to get those extra 10 grams, but honestly, I wouldn't even stop there. The reason I say that is because for the last three years, my racket of choice has been the Gravity Tour with a leather grip, and other than the string bed and static weight, there is literally no other spec difference between the two rackets. I don't see why a 16x20 needs to be 10 grams lighter than an 1820. Just look at the blade and pure strike 
strike lines. They don't lower their 1619s compared to their 1820s. Playing with the Tour for the last three years, I think I've dialed it into absolute perfection. So I think the Gravity MP can be just a slightly more spin-friendly version of that racket if you dial it into the exact same specs. Now this is where that brand new gadget I was talking about comes into play because we just got an amazing new diagnostic machine in the Wilson Bayardo Tune Pro that can actually match a racket's weight balance, swing weight, and weight distribution to absolute perfection. So let's see if we can match this Gravity MP to my trusty Gravity Tour. All right, so we're here in the store today with this lovely new Bayardo Tune Pro diagnostic machine, and we're going to see what we can do about turning this Auxetic Gravity MP into basically just another version of the 360 Plus Gravity Tour that I've been playing with for the last three years. So we just have a more spin-friendly version of the Gravity Tour. Now the machine is great because you can test every diagnostic spec like you should expect on a diagnostic machine, but it will actually tell you where to place weight in order to match them closest in terms of weight distribution, balance, swing weight, and static weight. Now the first thing we're gonna do is cut out the strings in both these rackets so we can make as accurate a test as possible. Now, as you guys can see, I already done a bit of customization to my Gravity Tour. I've put some lead in the hoop there at 12 o'clock, as you can tell, to boost the swing weight a bit. Also put a leather grip, because leather grips are just sick. Now, so the first thing we're gonna have to do is take the specs of the Gravity Tour. So we're going to throw it on the sensor there. 314.4 grams, 32 centimeter balance. Now what I'm gonna do is write those numbers down on a little piece of paper so that I can remember them or when I want to match the Gravity MP numbers to that right there. And now I'm going to test the swing weight to get that as well. 305, so I'll write that down again on my little piece of paper and we'll get going on the Gravity MP. Now, I've already gone and put the leather grip on the Gravity MP as you can see because I want a leather grip on it. Plus, I'm gonna have to boost the static weight, so if there's a leather grip on my Gravity Tour, I might as well put one on my Gravity MP to help boost that weight. Here we go, 304.1 grams, 32 centimeter balance. It's actually got the exact same balance and we're gonna test the swing weight now. 301 so it's lower which means we're gonna have to raise the swing weight but obviously also raise the static weight there from 304.1 to 314.4 so now we're gonna go to tuning mode gonna enter the racket's length which we all know is 27 inches and I've already checked the head length which is 13.8 so now we're gonna put the gravity MP on the scale and see what needs to be done to match it to the gravity tour I'm still kind of ironing out the kinks with this machine but working my way through it. So and now we're gonna enter the target specs. That's where our little piece of paper with the numbers is gonna come in handy dandy. So I'll bring that up to 314.4. Balance is the same, so 32. And the swing weight, we're gonna want it 305. Calculate. So this is the really cool part of the Bayardo Tune Pro. So I'm gonna zoom in. Basically, that orange line you see on the racket is telling us where to put the weight uh, on the racket to get the same specs as the Gravity Tour that we measured earlier. And it's also telling us that we need to add 10 points .3 grams, and if you don't want to just eyeball it, the exact place you need to put 10.3 grams is at 29.7 centimeters up the racket. That's very cool. We're going to go ahead and do that weight. We're going to kind of spread it out as evenly as possible along that line to try to get it as close as possible. Let's go ahead and add those 10.3 grams of lead to the Gravity MP where we've been told to add them by the machine. So I've been told to do it 29.7 centimeters up the racket. So first thing I'm going to do is measure exactly where that is and go 29.7 centimeters up the frame. So 29.7 is right around here. So I'm gonna put a little piece of tape there. That is where I'm going to put most of my lead. So let's go with half inch for this since we're putting it mainly in the throat. 10.3 grams, 20, 20.6 inches. Okay, measure out 20.6 inches. Slice that there, 20 inches. Let's do it, let's do four five inch strips. All right. So I've got my layered strips here. Now, that's pretty much the whole throat. Okay, now I'm gonna put my second strip in there. Right at the top of the throat there. Okay, let's see how that did. All right, so as you can see, we got the, the weight there in the throat, which is what the machine told us to do. Just giving it the old field test with my hand. I've felt a lot of unstrung gravity tours over the last three years, and it feels feels pretty good. Obviously, my field test is not gonna be as accurate as the Bayardo Tune Pros test. <laughs> So let's go ahead and throw it on. Let's see just how well we did there. Okay, 313.7 grams, 31.9 centimeter balance. So the balance actually moved a little bit and the weight's not quite as high. So maybe we need to add some weight. Definitely can do that. So let's test the swing weight here. Hopefully this is lower than 305. 
303. That's actually great because we do need to add about one gram. We need the balance to move up 0.1 centimeters and we need two swing weight points. So this is where the fine tuning is going to come in, but we got remarkably close with what the machine told us to do. So let's just fine tune it here. I'm going to cut about a gram of lead and put it where I think one gram would bring the swing weight up two points, which is probably going to be at 12 o'clock. Okay, so I've added a little dab of lead there at 12, as you can see. You know, this is gonna be a bit of trial and error, but let's see how close we got. I'm guessing we got pretty close. We actually only needed to add 0.7 grams. I just checked my little sheet. Oh, we're 0.2 grams high. The balance is perfect. I'm gonna test the swing weight. Now, I almost hope this is like tiny bit high so I can take off those 0.2 grams, but. 306. Okay, very exciting. So it is a little high. I'm gonna go ahead and take off a tiny bit here. Okay, so I took off a tiny bit there. You can probably tell that it's a little bit less. 314.5, 32 centimeter balance. If this is 305 swing weight, we are gonna call it good because I'm not going to make a fuss about 0.1 grams. 305. So we kind of got it, guys. This is super cool. Okay, now, now the perfectionist in me kind of wants to get it to 314.4, but let's just see if I can at least. Okay, how much do you weigh? So there you go, 314.4 grams, 32 centimeter balance after taking off that tiny little bit there. I just really want this swing weight to be accurate. Come on, you got this. 305, that is perfect. We've done it. Got our little sheet here, 314.4, 32.0. 305, and that says the exact same numbers. So we just successfully turned that Gravity MP into the Gravity Tour. Now, I have done this with the 360 Plus, so I know how well it makes the Gravity MP play. I think it makes it play better, to be honest. Just a more stable, spin-friendly version of the Gravity MP, and basically just a more spin-friendly version of the Gravity Tour. So a great frame, and kind of the ideal spec, I think, for the Gravity MP, but it is kind of cool how this machine has basically let us tune it to perfection. So yeah, it's it's a very cool machine. It's a very, very fun toy, but let's go back to the studio. Okay, so you guys just saw how cool of an instrument the Wilson Bayardo Tune Pro is, especially for a guy like me who loves geeking over tennis specs. So I'm definitely gonna be using it in the future to try and improve our content. There are even some other features like the brand new vertical bending spec that I haven't really even explored. So stay tuned, but let's move on to the next racket. Now the Speed MP is the first real odd one out on this list. That's because it has a fairly thick 23 millimeter beam, but also the way it's designed is a little bit different to your classic control rackets. It's still a soft racket, so weight will stabilize it, but it has a slightly more modernly shaped throat, which means it'll be more solid in stock form than something like the Gravity or the Blade. That's why I don't think you need to boost the swing weight as much on the Speed, but I still think it can do with a little nudge. Because the beam is still constant, it will respond fine to weight in the hoop, and I do think that adding a little bit more swing weight is gonna add power and spin potential to a slightly more competitive level because I do think 316 is a little low. Bump it to the mid 320s, you don't need to go as high as the Speed Pro, but just under it will be perfect. No pun intended, but you don't want to lose that speed, so I wouldn't place the lead too far up the frame. I actually like to put it at six o'clock on the Speed, so when you combine that with the leather grip, it actually makes the frame even more head light and whippy, which makes it feel quicker, so it's a great combo. I also think that at only 300 grams, it's a little too light and unstable stock, so once again, I'm going to tell you to throw a leather grip on and no I'm not done with them yet. Okay, so the last racket I want to go over here is the E-Zone 98. Now this is even more of an odd one out than the Speed because it's got a pretty thick hoop and a non-constant beam. That being said, because the E-Zone's throat is so thin and so flexible, it's still ripe for customization and because I know so many people like to customize their E-Zone 98s, this is what I recommend. Leather grip. Okay, I promise I'm done, otherwise I'm going to get a strike for being a non-vegan friendly video. Actually, Djokovic is a vegan and uses a leather grip and natural gut, so I think I'm fine. But if this does go viral, we're gonna have a cow shortage, so I better stop. Anyways, the E-Zone is only 305 grams, and with any 305.98, I do think a bit of weight in the handle is almost necessary, and if you do wanna save the cows, go for lead or silicone instead. Speaking of lead, the E-Zone does have a very low swing weight, and while I do think it's fine in stock form because the hoop is a little thicker on this racket, I do think it can do with a bit of extra oomph. Now, one thing I do love to do with Yonex rackets is put my lead on the outsides of the hoop rather than at the six and 12 o'clock positions. That's because with the isometric head shape, the sweet spot is really long, but not really wide. So adding weight to that width 
We'll expand it a bit horizontally and make it a little bit more forgiving. On the E-Zone in particular, I like going a little bit above the three and nine position, more towards the 10 and two o'clock position, just to give it a little bit more plow through and spin potential, almost like a three and nine and 12 o'clock hybrid lead placement, you could say. Hopefully showing you up close like this will show you a little bit more about what I mean by that 10 and two o'clock position, but I know a lot of you will already know. Now an E-Zone 98 with a swing weight in the mid to high 320s can be truly monstrous, but I do think that this E-Zone in particular plays better better in stock form than most of its predecessors because Yonex did thicken it up by half a millimeter. So there you go, those are the rackets that we carry at Rackets and Runners that I think do best with a bit of customization. But before we finish up, I did just want to give a quick mention to a couple more. The Dunlop CX200 Tour has a quite frankly ridiculously low swing weight for a racket with such a small head size. When I took it out for a demo, I put lead pretty much all around the hoop and it played really well like that. It basically is a true platform racket in that sense. The Extreme Tour is also great with a slight boost in static and swing weight, but it's definitely not necessary. And apparently, if you add a leather grip to an air 98, it'll make you play tennis to absolute perfection. So try that, but no guarantees. I also just wanted to remind everybody that customizing can be a great tool and lots of fun, but it's not going to make you a better player. I hate saying that because it sounds so condescending, but I'm just putting it out there, especially because I know that a lot of people can get a little bit too caught up in customization, thinking that it's the secret recipe to improving their game. At least I know I've been there. But that's all from us today. Stay tuned for our next video, which I'm just saying I know a lot of you will like. But remember that if you do want to check out any of the rackets that we mentioned here today, you can always visit us on our website, racketsandrunners.ca.